Now, every time there's a huge advancement in the coronavirus story, we get a ton of questions. This vaccine news is no different. A lot of you have been reaching out, wanting to know how this is going to work, what we're dealing with moving forward. Our Kristen Severance is our go to person to get these questions answered. Kristen, what do you have for us tonight? OK, so our first question is something so many people want to know. How will I know when it's my turn to get the vaccine? We reached out to the Oregon Health Authority for this answer. A spokesman said it's going to be a while, probably spring until the general population gets the vaccine. But when that time comes, vaccine providers, including pharmacies, doctors, offices, clinics, etc., will be giving out the vaccine. The OHA said those providers will notify the public when the vaccine is available by posting that information online, and then you have to reach out to your provider to then get the vaccine. One thing we keep people want to know the specifics of this, and one thing we keep getting asked a lot, what's the difference between the first and second dose of this vaccine? Are they the same? Yeah, so this answer actually surprised me. Uh, yes, they are. They're the same. The contents of the first and second doses of each vaccine are the same, but they function differently in the body. So the first dose is supposed to train the immune system and the second dose will boost the immune system to its highest peak levels to give you the most durable immunity. All right, so our next question, can you just get one dose if the supplies run out? So this is a two part answer. So yes, you can, but Doctors and health officials say you really should not do that because in order for the vaccine to be about 95% effective, patients need to take two doses. For Pfizer, according to the FDA, the vaccine does offer strong protection, about 53% efficacy against COVID-19 within about 10 days after the first dose. But it's unclear how long this protection will last, underscoring the importance of getting the second dose that brings the efficacy rate to that near 95% after seven days. The OHA has told us it will make sure that everyone who gets a first dose gets a second dose and they are confident that they will receive more allocations from the federal government. I have a question. Uh, I've seen this a couple of times too, so I don't feel embarrassed asking it. And it's about the really, really cold temperature that these that at least one of these vaccines has to be stored at that 70 degrees Celsius. Will the vaccine remain in that cold of a temperature when it's injected into your arm? I mean, I heard you laugh a little bit there. We've gotten this question so many times. No, it it will not. Uh, and I don't blame people for asking this because we kept talking about the ultra cold storage. So the vaccine will be thawed to a liquid form of around 36 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit before it's injected. It will be the same temperature as any other vaccine by the time it's put into the syringe. And that's according to an expert at the Oregon Health and Science University, Mark Slifka. All right, two more questions. Great questions. Number one, are flu rates down this year in Oregon and across the country? Flu cases are extremely low this year. So in mid-December of last year of 2019, we were already seeing several hundred positive tests each week compared to a handful a week this year. The OHA told us that we were having 20 to 30 hospitalized cases a week this time last year. We have not had any hospitalized flu cases in the metro area, which is very unusual. The CDC says it's because the measures we have taken to fight COVID-19 are also working to fight the flu. And then this last question, well, it's more of a statement from a story viewer. She says, please start adding that the vaccine benefited from the preliminary work that came from developments for a MERS vaccine and another coronavirus. And this Mary, that's the viewer who wrote that wrote this, said that it's one reason to help us understand, you know, why this happened so fast. And she's right. One of the biggest mis conceptions about COVID-19 about the vaccine is that its development started with the pandemic. In reality, scientists had a head start because COVID-19 comes from a family of viruses, including the SARS coronavirus of 2002 and the MERS coronavirus of 2012. 2012. Many of the researchers who are developing the COVID-19 vaccines have previously worked on vaccines for the SARS and the MERS viruses, so they already knew about a lot about what worked and what didn't. And scientists already knew how this family of viruses behaves, their biology, and the so-called spike protein, which allows the virus to enter our cells and infect us. So a lot of the groundwork, Dan, was already laid, you know, before COVID-19 became a thing. I, you know, you kind of sound like you're uh, pre-med at this point with all the work you've been doing, kind of researching this virus. Do you want to tell people a little bit about how you're able to answer these questions night after night? Uh, luckily, we work with a ton of smart people. Uh, we have this whole vaccine team here at KGW, and we also reach out to so many sources and doctors and scientists and health experts. So that's how we are able to really answer all these questions. So please keep them coming. All you have to do is use. Oh, no. Keep it's got to be on there somewhere.
<laughs> All you have to do is use everyone's favorite hashtag. Hey, Dan. Hey, we got to it. Thanks, Kristen.